Tonight, we start by taking a look at today's solar eclipse and event kickoffs on campus. Then we'll inform you about the College of Veterinary and Sciences Vet Fest and a few organizations giving students special opportunities. We'll also take a look nationally by updating you on the United States involvement with Iran and a possible regional war. Finally, you'll get an Auburn sports update and an entertainment update brought to you by Eagle Eyes Brett Fouts. All of that and more is coming up next on Eagle Eyes Monday News at 6. Good evening and welcome to Eagle Eye News at 6. I'm Bowman Ivester. And I'm Jack Sublett. Today was one of the most anticipated scientific phenomena of the last 20 years, a total solar eclipse. Eagle Eye reporter Ava Marchese tells us more. Auburn University students have their eyes on the sky as the 2024 solar eclipse briefly casts a shadow across campus. Let's take a look. The solar eclipse occurring on April 8th, 2024 will reach its peak visibility around 2 p.m. for the Auburn community. As the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, the image of the sun is briefly obscured for viewers. I think it's a very monumental thing and we're very lucky get, to get to see it. The eclipse magnitude was 83% for the Auburn area, with only eight cities experiencing totality spanning from Texas to Maine. There are not many times where it's going to be like pretty dark when it's like 2 in the afternoon. Special glasses to view the eclipse are highly suggested as the solar rays can cause serious eye injuries. For students who do not have access to the eclipse glasses, a live stream of the eclipse and telescopes are arranged outside a Catherine Cooper Cater Hall. In addition to the darkening sky, some shadows appear to be casted in a crescent shape. This is Ava Marchese, Eagle Eye TV. Make sure to watch out when you're walking down the concourse this week. You might get caught in the SEC food fight happening now until April 18th. Eagle Eye reporter Allison Ferran visited Beat Bama Food Drive's kickoff event for the food fight and tells us more. Today we're taking a look at Beat Bama Food Drive's SEC food fight, a drive to benefit Auburn's campus food kitchen. So SEC Food Fight's a big competition between like a ton of schools in the SEC, and our goal is $10,000 to raise, and we're fighting food insecurity across East Alabama, but we're all competing against each other, and whoever raises the most money in monetary donations ends up winning, so it's so much fun. And Beat Bama Food Drive, uh, because of what, what we do for the fall, we also like, carry that over uh, into SEC Food Fight with staff members and committee members all helping out. So today is our uh, kickoff event, mm -hmm. and it's, I think, it, I believe it's one, it's one, one dollar for one throw in the, the dunk tank, five dollars gets you unlimited throws, uh, and then uh, same with the little basketball game, game right there, too. Beat Bama Food Drive is hosting multiple events per week while the food fight lasts until April 18th. Okay, we have neighborhood drives, and then we're sorting at the food pantry, and then we're doing a lot of like alumni backpacking, stuff like that. To learn more about the food fight and how you can donate, visit BBFD's page on AU Involve. I'm Allison Varan, reporting for Eagle Eye TV. Speaking of kickoffs, Auburn students can look forward to one of campus's most cherished traditions, glomerata distribution. Tomorrow begins distribution 127. Every Auburn student gets one yearbook for free and can pick it up from one of a few locations. The Haley Concourse, the Rec, Gin Concourse, the Edge, and RBD Library. Distribution will last from this Tuesday morning until Friday afternoon. Make sure to grab your coffee copy this week at any of their tables. When we come back, we'll provide more on-campus news followed by a national news update. You're watching Eagle Eye News at 6. The College of Veterinary Medicine hosted their inaugural Vet Fest this past weekend, a time for the community to come to campus and explore exhibits on veterinary medicine and biomedical science. Eagle Eye reporter Mackenzie Deutschman attended the event and tells us more. Welcome to Vet Fest. <laughs> Vet Fest is an event hosted by the College of Veterinary Medicine that includes a wide variety of activities for the community to come and enjoy. Oh 
Although VetFest used to be an annual event, this was the first one to happen in four years due to the COVID-19 epidemic. And the turnout this year was great. Over a hundred people attended the event this year and got to partake in activities such as the canine parade of breeds, painted horses, a teddy bear surgery, a bee lab, and other student club exhibits. VetFest also included a petting zoo, which included a milking cow and a few calves, two goats, and two sheep. And last but not least, VetFest also featured a visit from the Auburn Raptor Center, which had a variety of birds and even the eagle that circles the field before the football games. VetFest was not only entertaining, but also very educational. Students in veterinary medicine inspired others to look further into the field. Families that attended left not only having a great time, but also learned something new. For Eagle Eye TV, I'm Mackenzie Deutschman reporting. The Black Student Union held a general assembly on Monday centered around line dancing. Hosted on the lawn of Cater Hall, the event was put together by the Freshman Committee. Students were encouraged to come out, eat some food, socialize, and of course, dance. Um, so this event is just a line dance general assembly. Um, so we're just trying to get students out of the classroom, uh, let them get some fresh air, and also enjoy themselves in fellowship with the rest of the community. So just, you know, just a fun day, essentially. Last Tuesday, Auburn's International Student Organization, ISO, hosted Mental Health Day tabling in the second floor lobby of our Melton Student Center. Students who happened to be passing the Student Center were greeted with free sandwiches, chips, drinks, candy, and chocolate. They were also reminded why our mental health is so important, especially with final season rapidly approaching us students here at Auburn. Students were provided with resources to support each other and how to prioritize their mental health. We spoke to Auburn's ISO president, Hannah Hong, to tell us more about the event. So, mental health is really important for our life and our health. So that's why we want to feature it. And we're giving out free food, free candy, dark chocolate for students as a treat and to prepare them for final week. When we come back, we'll provide a national news update regarding the U.S. involvement with Iran, and then we'll bring it back to campus to provide an Auburn sports update. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, Auburn's news leader. The U.S. is ready to defend its assets if Iran attacks them. That's the latest message out of Washington, since U.S. officials announced such a strike might be in the works. They believe it's inevitable Iran will attack U.S. or Israeli targets in the Middle East as early as this week. Iran is angry about Israel's strike on its consulate in Syria last week. Now, the U.S. worries the response could start a regional war, as CNN's Amy Kiley reports. We're very concerned about a pending Iranian attack somewhere. The U.S. will defend itself if Iran attacks an American target. That warning yesterday is from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. He says the U.S. is prepared to defend any attack and respond swiftly if, if necessary. U.S. officials predict a significant Iranian attack on American or Israeli assets in the Middle East as early as this week. I know the president and his team are working hard to prevent escalation. The potential danger from Iran comes after an Israeli strike on its consulate in Syria last week. Now, the Israel Defense Forces say they're preparing to deal with Iran, quote, offensively and defensively. It doesn't make sense to keep on uh, fighting these arms while letting Iran itself get away from it. The Biden administration says if Iran attacks Israel directly, it almost guarantees a regional conflict. Syria and same extent Lebanon are both launching points for Iranian attacks against Israel. Israel says it's moving into an offensive phase along its border with Lebanon. It's been exchanging fire with Iran-backed Hezbollah forces that are in that country. Lebanese people do not want to see an expanded war because the last time Hezbollah and Israel went to war, it was really bad for the Lebanese people. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 
When we return, Eagle Eyes Mackenzie Deutschman will give you an Auburn sports update, followed by an entertainment update with Brett Fouts. Stay tuned for more. <laughs> Welcome back to Eagle Eye News at 6. I'm Mackenzie Deutschman, here with a fun week in Auburn sports to recap. So, let's get right into it. Starting out with Diamond Sports, Auburn baseball faced the number four Tennessee Volunteers this past weekend right here in Auburn at Plainsman Park. Although the Tigers did not pull out a series win, the Tigers still managed to break records. Auburn started the weekend out strong as they defeated Tennessee in the first matchup on Friday with a score of 9-5. to five. Not only did Ike Irish bring home a home run in the bottom of the first, but he was also awarded the Golden Spikes Award and has earned his way onto the midseason watch list. Shortly after Irish, Cade Bellew hit a Bellew bomb, hitting a home run with a distance of 461 feet, being the longest homer by an Auburn player at Plainsman Park since 2011. Also, Auburn fans showed up and showed out to support their Tigers, breaking the record and being the largest three-game attendance in program history. The Tiger Tigers continue their SEC play tomorrow. Oh, wait their season tomorrow as they play Alabama State at Plainsman Park at 6. The game will be streamed live on the SEC Network. Continuing with Auburn softball, the Tigers went 3-1 at the War Eagle Classic this past weekend, which took place here in Auburn at Jane B. Moore Field. The Tigers faced the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Players Isis Tresvik, Michaela Packers, Maddie Penta, and Anna Woolers were named all-tournament, and Annabelle Weidra pitched her 100th strikeout of her Auburn career. The Tigers move on to play the University of Alabama Birmingham here at Jane B. Moore Field tomorrow at 6 p.m. The game will also be streamed live on the SEC Network. Overall, it was a successful A-Day on the Plains for Auburn sports. Auburn volleyball defeated Alabama, men's tennis defeated Alabama, and Auburn football had their matchup between offense and defense, ending the scrimmage with, a, with local legend Towns Mugo, making his debut by kicking a 58-yard field goal and winning the game for team offense. And to that, I say War Eagle. Eagle Eye's Brett Fouts had a first-hand look at the team and has more. Football fever is picking back up here on the Plains as the Tigers held their annual A-Day game on Saturday. After the Eagle flu, it was all eyes on five-star true freshman and early enrollee Cam Coleman. Coleman certainly didn't disappoint in his first performance for Auburn as the top recruit in the state of Alabama dazzled, including this 34-yard touchdown from Peyton Thorne. He would finish the afternoon with four catches for 92 yards, a touchdown, offensive MVP honors, and was still able to make it back to his high school prom that night. Some other new faces got their first action for the Tigers, as Georgia State transfer Robert Lewis had five catches for 73 yards, and former Cal quarterback turned wide receiver Sam Jackson V had two catches for 27 yards. Peyton Thorne had a solid day as well, going 9 of 13 for 133 yards and a touchdown while not turning the ball over. True freshman Walker White saw the field as well, finishing 5 of 13 for 83 yards. However, it never felt like the run game got going very strong, and you can credit that to the Tigers' defensive line, who had a great afternoon. The unit logged eight tackles for loss, led by Quintrail Jamison Travis, who had three. Safety Jaron Thompson earned defensive MVP honors as he recorded three tackles and a sack. And who can forget that special teams make special plays? Freshman and Auburn local Towns McGue filled in for Alex McPherson and finished 7-for-7 seven seven on the day, including this kick at the end that was good from 58 yards and won the game for the offense 28-27. For Eagle Eye TV, I'm Brett Fouts. And that's all I've got for sports tonight. Tune in Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Sports Night in Auburn right here on Eagle Eye TV for more sports coverage. I'm Mackenzie Deutschman for Eagle Eye Sports, and you are watching Eagle Eye News at 6. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Eagle Eye News at 6. I'm Brad Fouts here with your entertainment update.
When a bunch of hogs are on the loose, who are you going to call? One cop is destined for viral stardom after he was caught on camera throwing caution to the wind and throwing himself at this pesky pig problem. Jeremy Roth has all this chaos and more in today's Take a Look at This. Watch a Utah cop use fancy footwork to chase down a panicked pig on the loose. It started when Grantsville City PD posted a public alert saying multiple hogs were on the loose in a neighborhood and the city would attempt to trap them. The next day, this destined to be viral video popped up showing a Grantsville cop running down one of the escaped pigs, which despite its best efforts to bob and weave, can't get away when the cop goes whole hog with a diving grab. The officer then brings home the bacon carrying the captured swine as it shares a defiant whine. The department posted that the pig situation was handled and even shared some more of the officer saying he clearly has a way with animals. Animal lovers in coastal Georgia took to the sea to release a slew of turtles and managed to make history in the process. 34 turtles packed and padded in individual boxes were flown to Jekyll Island from New York and Massachusetts after months of rehabilitation following a near-death cold stun during the freezing winter months. 33 Kemp's Ridley turtles and one green sea turtle were nursed back to health and then set free in what organizers said was the largest sea turtle release in Georgia's history. Hey, if you love something, let it go. A Cracker Barrel restaurant under renovation in Tennessee decided to part ways with some of its signature classic country store decor by putting on a yard sale of sorts, and fans <laughs> were fit to be tied. Reportedly, within half an hour, shoppers snatched up nearly all 700 items that headlined this one-of-a-kind Cracker Barrel Country Fried Brick-a-Brack fire sale. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. You may not have chased a pig around Auburn this weekend, but it is quite possible that you indulged in a good film. The most popular movies in theaters this weekend primarily involved primates. David Daniel isn't just monkeying around. He has the early box office estimates for the top five films. Where's the skadoosh? Kung Fu Panda 4 made $7.9 million for fifth place and a domestic total of $166 million. The first Omen debuted in fourth place, finding a weaker than expected $8.4 million in the collection plate. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came up with $9 million, giving the latest paranormal comic adventure third place and $89 million domestic. <laughs> Monkey Man opened strong in second place. Dev Patel stars and makes his directorial debut with the action drama, which made $10.2 million. Something is coming. Something even they're afraid of. Godzilla Kong The New Empire keeps exceeding expectations. The latest Monster Mash easily kept the crown with a $31.7 million weekend for a 10-day domestic total of $135 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I'm Brett Fouts, and this has been your entertainment update. Now back to Bowman and Jack. Thank you, Brett. Well, we're out of time, but for more Auburn news, head to our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, and check out our social media pages. I'm Jack Sublet. And I'm Bowman Ivester. Thank you for watching, and War Eagle.